I wanted to make a cover to turn these three signatures into a junk journal. And for that cover, I want to use this really dirty and really vintage bag. And I have absolutely no idea if this can work and, it, and if yes, how it can work. So what to do if you have something, but you don't know if it can work. Really easy answer. Just do it. Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel. <laughs> Welcome to this video and thanks for joining me today with this, to be honest, a little bit weird project. Uh, if you are new to my channel or if you don't know who I am or what uh, I am doing here, you can find a playlist linked below this video about what I have here in my hands. These are three loose signatures and I want to turn them into a junk journal which documents my move slash the construction site in my new apartment because I am going to move from Austria where I am at the moment to Germany and yeah I wanted to have a memory about that and I have collected a ton of materials on the construction site and one of those and made the journal out of that, them and one of those things is this paper bag. It was originally a little bit bigger. And now <laughs> there happened a thing that I have seen coming, but I couldn't avoid it, obviously. Originally, I had planned to take this paper bag and just wrap it around here to make the cover. But as you can see, this is too short. I mean, there would be no problem with having such a short cover yeah, and having this peeking out but I don't like that so much. You could do it, but I don't like that. So I want to find another solution. The problem is that I have cut out pieces here for making the pages and now I have not um, enough material left over here. That bothers me a little bit because I have thought about that before I cut the bag, but yeah, let's just do this. Let's, let's just do it. I think if I <clears throat> take this, and tear that here, then it could work. But wait, Luisa, wait. Then it's not high enough. We have to make a little operation. We have to first tear it here. So then this is high enough. And then I have to tear it here. So that way I can have this on the other side so that this whole piece gets longer. So, wonderful. This should work. Oh, what is this? Ah, okay. That is, <laughs> what the heck? This material is so strange, but this is really good. I mean, look, it's, it's the perfect crunch. Let's see. Now, <clears throat> this should work. If I do it like so, then I can determine the exact measurements <laughs> of this. And I have even a piece left over here. I'm just thinking, here's this cool writing. Um, can we make it work that we can see that this is really thick? Um, okay, can go either this way then this would be on the front and that would be really cool mm -hmm. uh, I think and that is I mean that is a problem you, you perhaps think what is she doing she has no no idea of what she's doing yes that is correct because um, this material, as you can see, it is not only very old, but it has this weird texture here and these weird layers. And I couldn't take this apart before um, starting the video because then you would have missed this part. And of course, I want to show you my process as real as possible. And that is why I'm yeah, struggling here nearly live on camera. <laughs> but I just, I'm just thinking, I think it's better to first determine the width of the spine to be able to see what's going on there and then decide if we want to use this and layer that on top 
I don't know if that is possible because this is, this is so thick. And another thing is, I think I want to use some fabric for the spine to make this whole thing sturdier. I don't just want to sew through this paper bag because even if it has three layers in total, that would be not sturdy enough in my eyes. So let's do that first. Determine... Ooh, what is this? <sighs> my whole life is like, like this at the moment. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but... I want to have that <laughs> exactly like it is. I will probably clean the paper bag um, in a second a little bit, but I want to leave some of this authentic dust in the journal. <laughs> That's weird, I know. So let's first look at our signatures and let's do something because I want to add some more pages to my journal because with my uh, one of my last videos, I made something. I made these little flowers here I mean um, not only on this paper here but also in real and then I turned them into a digital paper so what you can see here you can find in my Etsy shop and this is a total of eight pages to print the link is down below in the description box quick little note this orange frame here is only because my printer made a little mistake so this is just a fail of my printer you will not get this on your print when you uh, purchase this item in my shop just wanted to mention that I'm really sorry that I can't show you a good print uh, that is something that really bothers me but it's not uh, possible at the moment that I can print normally without this fail because my printer is not willing to do that I have no idea why so these are the pages I want to include as journaling pages in my journal because I have the feeling that the pages I already have are nice but they are not so flat and handy for journaling so that's why I want to use these this is a total of eight pages I have printed my brushed blossoms printable on the back again these orange frames you would not get if you decide for uh, this printable from my shop so this is again just a fail from my printer and this is also like only printed on normal copy paper so the print is a little bit like not so vibrant this is the back side of some photo paper meaning this is printed on the photo paper side of this paper and this is just normal copy paper if you would print the brushed blossoms that's the name of this set to photo paper as well then it would come out a little different but i think this is a great place for journaling these also turned out some kind of orangey i'm just realizing that but i think they are nice in combination with this um, with these colors in the journal they are really nice but when you print them at home you get a different result yeah and that is also not only um you not not only because of the fail that my printer does but also because of the quality of the paper if you use copy paper you get something like this if you use photo paper you can i think see the difference immediately it's way more vibrant i'm going to fold these papers in half and if you have bought a printable and you think oh it's a printable that's nice i can print it as often as i want but i always have the same printable please think about the options you have by choosing different papers meaning for example copy paper or photo paper um, high quality paper um, ex expensive pa um, yeah that is the same expensive paper or cheap paper different kinds of photo paper Please experiment a little bit with your printer and the settings of your printer and then you will see that you can get really different vibes from one and the same printable by printing it multiple times to different paper kinds of paper. In this case here, as I said, this turned out very orange, but in this case it's good for me because it fits the journal and the colors of the journal. And when I say you can get different colors, then I mean look to my shop and look um, to the item that you have chosen that you want to purchase. Then you see the colors on your screen and you see how it's meant to come out from your printer. If you print with different um, paper qualities, you can get different vibes of this printable. 
different variations, but I don't mean something like this. Yeah. So if, for example, one of your cartridges is empty, then you could get something like a really neon print of something and that looks really ugly and your eyes get sick when you look to that. Of course, I'm not talking about something like that, yeah, but I'm talking about variations of the colors that come with different printer settings and different paper qualities. If you have something like this, you know that it is definitely a fail. And if your whole page looks like neon orange, like here, and everything is like that, then you know that something with your printer isn't working. And so please um, have this kind of difference in mind. So next I take my pages and I put them in here with a little bit of, yeah, I don't want to say a headache, but something in mind that could happen but I want to try this out. Mm, I have learned from Barbara at 49 Dragonflies how to attach the pages to each other with some fabric. So in between of my pages, there's always this strip of fabric which attaches one page to the other. In Barbara's video series about making a really grungy and vintage journal, I will link that series down below for you so that you can watch that. She has done it by, I mean, um, sewing the signatures into the cover. She has done it by sewing with her sewing machine through here so that everything is attached within seconds <laughs> instead of using a thread and a needle and, you know, your hands to bind the signatures into the cover. And I want to try that, but <clears throat> I have then the problem that... I can sew without problems through here, through the fabric. I mean, sewing th fabric with the sewing machine, that is obviously not a problem. But it could happen that I perforate this page here and all of the printable pages which don't have fabric here. I don't want to put fabric here to make this like <laughs> flipping experience of these pages better. If here was fabric... This page and all of the others from my printables would always make something like like yeah like this when I flip because this would get stiff and then yeah this like flipping experience would be not so nice and I also want to see the full page of the printable with fabric here a part of the page would be covered I don't want to have that. So I will live with the risk that it could happen that the pages fall out later because they get perforated and then they fall out and we have to find a way to attach them back to the journal. But I want to try it out because if I don't try it out, I will never know if this could have worked or not. So I will take these pages and find some nice places for them and I will just put them in here. Since I know that the things I want to put into this journal are going to become pretty bulky, I want to leave a lot of space in between of the signatures so that I don't run out of space in this journal and that it doesn't get an uh, alligator mouth. Mm, yeah, like, like, I mean, this would be a good distance. How fat are my fingers? I mean, that would be a good distance for this whole thing. Uh, how can I measure this now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if every signature had an inch of space in total, I'm, I'm just trying to measure this here on my mat, that would probably be good. I'm trying to make a template. But how and with what? I don't have paper. <laughs> let's take this. And let's then think about the width. If we had three inches, this would have to be like this. Let's cut that off. Then we need to determine where the signatures have to be sewn. So meaning where my yeah, like sewing line is and I'm trying to imagine if the first signature was here on this line here so meaning 
in the middle of this first inch, the second signature was here and the third signature was here, then I would have half of an inch between the cover and the first signature, an inch between the first and the second signature, and also an inch between the second and the third signature, and half of an inch here in the back and I think that would be really good that seems also to be to be a really good proportion for this whole thing when I look to the width of this let's then determine the height of um, this this whole thing so that means we have to think about if we want to have the journal laying somewhere later or if we want it to be able to stand in a shelf I think with this kind of journal, it's important to think about that before you measure everything and before you make the cover. Because if you would make a cover, which is, let's say, a tiny little bit smaller than the pages to get this really rough look, even when the book is closed later, then you would have to have in mind that it can also happen that the pages peek out on the bottom. Imagine the cover was like this on the bottom. Now, this is even I have already I have already made this, yeah, so that it's in one line here. Let's turn it around to see what would happen if this was the bottom of the journal. So if you have a cover which is like the same um, size, like the first pages are, the same height or even a little bit smaller, some people do that as well, then you would have to live with this peeking out on the bottom. If this was then in your shelf like this, it can happen that these pages get destroyed or that this gets totally flat. And I don't like that. So that's why I have already taken the signatures. I did that somehow automatically during you know my process here. I did this. So that everything that wants to peek out, peeks out on the top here, but not on the bottom. So that we have a flat thing here and that the pages here have the same level. And when I put that into my shelf later, I can easily do it like this. And when the cover goes to the bottom here as well, I will never have problems with destroying what is peeking out because here is nothing peeking out and the cover protects the pages does that make sense so that means i'm going to take this i make sure that everything is lined up here and then i can determine the height of the cover and it is holy moly what is this i can't work when some oh! so we are going to make sure that this lines up on the bottom so that we then can take the template and line this up here as well I'm recording this part of the video for the fifth or tenth, tenth time I don't know in the camera it looks like this was longer it isn't I have no idea what is going on here look this is one line, yeah? So please don't be confused. It's the angle of my camera. When I put everything here, it looks like this is longer, but it isn't, yeah? It's, it's just like this, okay? So I'm going to take this so just that I can see what's going on here. I line this up here where you can't see it anymore, and then I can determine the height of the cover and with that of the spine. And here on the top, I want to have this peeking out. So I want the cover to be approximately this high where, where the, my pencil is now. So that would mean it would have to be exactly the height of this here or perhaps a tiny little bit higher so that this is covered up and that then this can peek out. To be able to see this better I'm just going to take this first signature and I place this here so that I can then press this down to see better what I'm doing here. And then I just determine the height of this whole thing. So that this is now the template for the spine. Then we take a high professional ruler. 
<laughs> I don't have my ruler here anymore, but this should work as well. And now I mark where I have to sew. So that means I look to these little lines and make a line here. Okay, so here we go. This is where the signatures will go, but now we need some fabric to make the spine sturdy. Where's my Tinholz fabric, which I found in one of my boxes here. Mm. Do I have more of this design? I think the choice is really easy. If this was enough, I would love to use this. Yeah, it is. Okay. So I will cut the height of this because that is something that I have already, you know, de determined how uh, high it shall be. But the width is depending on what we want to do with this whole thing. I mean, the whole cover. Perhaps I will even use this whole piece of fabric because this is just so beautiful. Perhaps we can include what is too much here to the design of the cover. So that means we have to have the three inches of the spine in mind when we then take this to see how long this whole thing has to be. So I'm going to take this and I'm trying to... Oh. <laughs> this is the hardest thing I could, I could imagine. how to handle this material. So the first thing is I have to take this second layer off, otherwise it, it's going to drive me crazy. Let's see, let's tear this off. We can attach that back later if we want. Then we probably <laughs> have to flatten this a little bit. Otherwise, I mean, how shall this work? How, how can it work? Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. I love that this is so textured, but how to manage this? I mean, how? How? Just how? It, it needs to be straight here somehow so that we don't get problems when this is in our shelf later. So I think what I'm going to do next is I take this to my really big paper trimmer to be able to cut it straight here. Then I'm going to sew here and here along the whole length and then we see how to determine the height and the width of the spine. I've just changed my mind. <laughs> I mean, it's just a second ago. But while um, saying my sentence here in German, yeah, so imagine, please imagine how I record this video. I speak English, German, English, German, English, German. You only hear English because I cut everything that, that, that's German off and out from the video yeah, so that it is edited so that you only hear English but I talk German in between in my reality and the German people will only see the German parts of the video and I just wanted to explain what I want to do cutting and then sewing in German and then I came to the idea why don't I take this edge and instead of cutting it just folding it like this and then sew over here because that looks way more interesting and we would get this really cool edge here instead of a cut edge. Huh. That's what we are going to do. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome in my life. Oh my goodness. So, let's do this. <clears throat> let's fold this as straight as possible. And then I will take this to my sewing machine and sew over here. Hopefully without freaking out.
Holy crap. Here I'm back. I, I'm back and I'm still alive. <laughs> this was so difficult. Oh my goodness. Okay. So what to do next? Let's take this. Turn it like so. Okay. Then the signatures would go in here like this. So that means uh, if we would put it in here and line it up here, we would have to think about how this edge shall look in the end. So, I mean, because um, if I would turn it and sew over here, then it would get shorter. I'm just thinking about a nice solution. And by saying nice, I mean something like really grungy, of course. <laughs> what, what else? Uh, no. What do you want to do? I, I, you can do what you want, but tell me what you want to do, and then I will sew over you <laughs> like you want to be. I think it wants to be like this. But what I really don't like is this area here. But I'm just thinking perhaps we can make something like a giant corner or so to cover this weird area because I really don't like this. But I will do it. I will take this and I will try to get... 90 degree angle here and sew over here and I will also sew along here because the material tells me that it wants to be like this and I want to attach the layers that this paper bag has to each other by sewing like crazy over it. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what this is going to become but this is what we have now. <laughs> So let's put the signatures in here again. <laughs> I know I have to cut it here, but this is already, I mean, oh my goodness, I already love it. I think the easiest way to get the right proportion and the right measurements is to take the signatures and take this like this. To be able to line this up like so this way i can also see how much i have here from the cover material so that i, I can see here that this which is going to be here later is going to line up here so yeah do you know what i mean eyeballing there is nothing else than eyeballing i can already see that this is going to become a disaster because <laughs> This can this can can never never be exactly never because this is so wonky, but we will do it anyway. I take my template, put this here, make a little line here, a little line here where the spine is, uh, ends. Oh my goodness! So let's make a mark here as well and here and I also make a little mark here where the spine is ending and with that this is the height of the cover <sighs> perhaps it's a good idea to connect the lines so that we can see that better take a high professional ruler Here. Uh, well, you see this content for free, <laughs> so perhaps you can live with this. I just thought I could take this material and just fold it over like this. 
sew over here to get a similar edge like we have here but is this too much then what is like overlapping to the cover but I could I could always tear this off if this was too much because when I see this um, look this is the front cover later and then here's the top of the cover and here's the bottom and if this is then so big it is something like a pressure from from top to bottom it would be better to have this wide thing on the bottom and this small thing on the top but that can't happen if this shall become the front more brain give me a solution so I've just decided that I want to try to fold this and then sew over it and if that part is then too big and too massive I will just tear it off Um, needle. I will poke in here where the spine is ending so that I can see that on the other side so that I know where to fold this so I can can see the holes here now since this can never be come straight I will just eyeball it and do what it wants to do and then I will take this and go to my sewing machine and so over here. <sighs> okay. Inside. The inside looks really nice. This would be even enough material to make a closure like this, you know, like, like a flap and then make a closure here, but this is that's too much to me. The danger would be too too much. I mean, if I would have this laying around somewhere, then someone could think that this is trash because, you know, it's a paper bag and then <laughs> this could be thrown away. That is too dangerous. So we have this here now. Um, and here is the end of the front cover. This has worked just perfectly fine. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that means we can now think about um, if this was here, like this. Where's my mark? Here. And if then the fabric would, oh my goodness, look at this. Oh, the fabric would then go around here. We could just sew it on here. That looks so cool. Yeah. I'm just thinking. I probably need a second piece of fabric in the inside then. The only problem is if I want to see this. The fabric would have to go in between here somehow. I think that that would look even better. This was, you know, somehow in there. So I want to leave this. I've just decided that I like this, especially on the spine. Here I can later on um, still decide if I want to tear this a little shorter to make like a curve here. But this, this piece of the material has to be on the spine and then we have this combination of fabric and paper here. So needs to go on here like this. How to sew over here if I don't see where to sew? because my marks are here. I am going to <laughs> first figure out. First, let's make this shorter so that it goes completely in there. Ich werde ich das erstmal ein bisschen kürzer machen, so dass das genau da reinpassen kann. Uh, so now the fabric is shorter so that it can go in here. I line this up here 
And now the challenge is to know where to sew. So let me do the trick with the needle. Where's my needle? I'm going to poke through here. There in one line with my mark here. Ich steche jetzt hier durch mit einer Nadel. Und zwar genau da, wo diese Linie von dem Ding hier endet, von der Vorlage. Now I can see my two holes here. I have to sew here and here. And here on the bottom, I think I can just guess where it is. Because I can lift the fabric up. I can eyeball that then. So I have taken a look under the fabric here so I could see where the marks are. And now I will sew along here to attach the fabric. My nerves are completely wrecked. <laughs> I can tell you. So I think now it would be a really good idea to have some fabric here on the inside of the spine as well to make this more strong. Oh no, is that really the truth? Oh no, I think that was the rest of that design of the fabric. No! Jesus Christ! Oh no! I only have this small piece left. Barbara, I need help. Scheiß doch die Wand an, Mensch. Was ist das denn? Oh! Arsch mit der Scheiße hier, ey. <lacht> Manchmal muss man ein bisschen rumfluchen. Oh! <lacht> Let's take this one. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Yeah, ja, Tim, I hear you. I hear you. Hopefully, sieht er das niemand sehen. So. <laughs> Just in case you are watching, please excuse me. Oh my goodness. Sometimes it's it's just like no matter what he says. I want to freak my freak right now, right in this moment. Okay. This should be pretty easy to attach now because we can see from this sewing here, which is on the outside, of course, as well, where to sew. So I will quickly try to attach this. Whew. Here we go. Ooh, I'm so sorry. Here we go. Wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely wonky, but that is totally fine. So let's put this here. So then this will go over here. And now, of course, there's a lot of space because it's not sewn in yet and it's not filled, but that is good. Uh, I mean that we have space. Uh, and now we have to determine what we have to cut off here. How the heck can I measure this? From here to here. Because it's also, can you see, it's a little stretchy somehow. I think we have to eyeball this. I can't see another solution. So let's do it. It will work. Let's just be, you know, trust the process. Trust the process. I will stick this down here. And then turn this around line this up here mm, no it's better to do it like this because then we can fold it so I line it up here so 
so that I then can take this and just fold it to the other side here where my tape sticks. So let's then tear this. Jetzt weiß ich das hier ein. Let's tear it here. Let's then take this and it like so oh that looks good so I will go to my sewing machine again and sew along here <laughs> look how wonky this is uh, it's a little long here but I think it's okay okay so trust the process and <laughs> uh, think about this shall I sew this on I don't know anything about the decoration for the cover yet, but I think it would look great if here was some sewing. <sighs> okay, so it's the next day. To be really clear, it's really early in the morning of the next day, and if you wanted uh, if you wanted to know it really exactly, I don't even have my normal clothes on my body. <laughs> but this somehow drives me crazy for several different reasons. And I think we have to make some changes here to make Louisa happy and satisfied in the end. <laughs> in the end. Can't even speak English. There are several different problems with this thing. And to be honest, this wrecks my nerves a little bit. And that's the reason why I'm sitting here without clothes, but <laughs> with this kind of thing. <laughs> I haven't even brushed my teeth or my hair, <laughs> but that doesn't matter. We have to solve some problems. And perhaps you want to know my thoughts about that. If not, just skip forward. <laughs> But I want to share my thoughts with you why this isn't something I can live with. So <clears throat> I try my best to explain that in English and to bring my thoughts to your desk and to your ears. In the beginning, we have thought about how high the cover can be. And we have decided that we want to have the pages lined up with the bottom line of the cover here so that the cover then later or the journal can stand in the shelf like this without this being destroyed that means when i hold it like this now we can see all of this stuff here on the top and this is for my taste really important for the whole look of the journal i need to see these things here I need to consider the width of the spine compared to the size of this to get a really nice proportion of the journal. And all of that, this, I mean that this is straight and lined up, this, that this peaks out, and also the <laughs> width of the spine and this, that makes one picture in my head and that adds to the whole vibe of the journal and of course also the feeling when you touch it not only with your hands but also when you touch it with with your eyes does that that make sense so in my eyes the proportion of the journal is a little wrong because we see this and this adds to the feeling of the journal but when i look here i have the feeling that it is like somehow empty here that this is way too long i will explain an additional reason why i think that this is too long in a second but it would in my eyes be better please look only here ignore this it would be better if 
this was more here on the edge and if this was somehow like this so that we can see a tiny tiny little bit of the pages here just some bits and pieces the same like here so that when we look from here to the journal or from here that we have the same vibe and the same feeling of it a second thing is and that is something i haven't um, thought about when i eyeballed the width of this is the following thing when you take your signatures and put them in here you have to have in mind with this kind of cover <laughs> that this is a curve here now this is not straight and you don't have a 90 degree angle between the spine and the cover pieces that would be a different thing if you had a hard cover but I can't turn this into a hardcover spine. Yeah, I, I don't want to turn this into a hardcover. That is probably a little confusing. So um, let me see. How can I explain that? If I press this, imagine then this would be like straight. And here there would be a 90 degree angle, the same on the back. And this would then be like a flat and straight spine. But if I want to have this, I would need to add something stiff in here. For example, a cardboard or something like that, or, or cardstock or so. A sturdy material. So that then the signatures... Oh my goodness, that is... It's so <laughs> fluffy that I can't... Not fluffy, it's so uh, squishy that I can't show it to you so well. But can you see? Then this would be like... So, this would be straight and the signatures would be like like here. They would end here and this would be a 90 degree angle and this would be a 90 degree angle and then this would be stiff if I would add a sturdier material in here. But I can't do that and I don't want to do that because I want to sew through the signatures with my sewing machine and sew them to the spine with my sewing machine. And I can't sew through a, sigma, a thick, <laughs> hopefully the material is not thick. I can't sew through a thick material uh, that I would need here with my sewing machine. That means if we take our scissor fingers here like so, <laughs> if we take the uh, journal like this and do something like this, then we can imagine where the signatures in the end will be because this is then probably what the journal wants to do. And if we have followed Barbara's tutorial, and if we follow Barbara, I, I'm talking about Barbara at 49 Dragonflies, then we know that her journals, or the most of her journals, look like this. And also in her um, tutorials, she shows that. And then, you know, we have this curve here. I, I know why I normally don't do that. <laughs> so then this is round and that means that the signatures are more there than they would be if this was straight yeah so there is a difference between um both of this uh, those methods of having the spine and when the signatures go more into that direction that of course means that this gets longer than yeah i mean it has, still has the same size, but uh, visually it gets longer. And when you then open this, you can see you have a ton of space here. So if I have this here and look here, can you see? This is totally ugly. This is the space I have here when I, if I would do it like it is now. yeah. And that is absolutely unacceptable. I can't do that. This is way too much. Look, this is... A couple of centimeters here and that is way too much and that of course comes because when the spine is curved here the signatures move into this direction so that they go away from here and then it is yeah they are shorter here and another thing is um <clears throat> and perhaps you don't have that in mind if you consider yourself a beginner in junk journaling if you make a um cover like this and uh, a flexible cover which has this curved spine and a squishy soft cover, or it doesn't have to be squishy, but a soft cover, then the following thing happens. If you look at the journal like this, let me quickly zoom out a little bit. 
And imagine you work in the journal and you glue things to the pages. And I'm planning to add a lot to the pages. So this is going to get a little bulkier. That is also the reason why I left a ton of space here so that I have enough space in the journal to glue bulky things. No matter if you glue bulky things or a ton of like flat things, the following thing will happen. Imagine we have things in between here and they are glued to the pages. What happens to the pages then? They don't stay flat like this, but they make something like this. Um, not necessarily this hole here that comes because I, I'm trying to demonstrate it and I press it yeah, with my hand. I took my hand and pressed it to this side so that you can see that. But there won't come such a hole. Yeah, But the pages will make something like this and turn from a straight line into a curve like this. Because what happens when here's something in between? That is a logical thing. The, the pages go in a curve like they want and they yeah, like bend. And in the end, <clears throat> let me try to show you that. In the end, every page will be either like this. I mean, perhaps not so extremely, yeah, but I bend it so that you can imagine what I'm talking about. But it will have it will be a curve like so, or <laughs> some pages will be a curve like this. So that then in the end it's in here, the pages are in here. <laughs> like this and on the other side in the other direction meaning the curve will then be here yeah but then the pages will get shorter somehow i mean <laughs> of course the paper will not disappear they will not like really get shorter but they will visually get shorter because this here then moves into this direction because a curve is always shorter <laughs> here than a straight paper. Do you know what I mean? And that means if I fill the journal, it will happen that this line here, where the pages end here, will go like this into this direction. I don't know how much because you can't control that. I mean, this is a junk journal. You can't control it. But it will not stay here. The end of this, the pages will not stay here. It will go into this direction. And that would mean that I would have even more space here next to the pages. And when I then open the journal, it can happen that it later on looks something like this. And this, this amount of space here is absolutely inacceptable. I mean, I want to eat this now. I don't want to store it here, but I could because it's so much space. Can you see? This is, it's just too much. Proportion-wise, that is too much for me. It's just my opinion, <clears throat> but I want to change that. And what I also don't like is suddenly this edge here. I really like this, yeah, <sighs> really trashy look of the cover but what i really don't like anymore is this but that is good because i can now uh, take this and do something and solve both of the problems this proportion problem and this problem at the same time because i thought what if we just take this and fold this like this then i get rid of this portion here Instead of having that on the cover then, I will have that in the inside of my journal. And I think <clears throat> that can look even more interesting than it was before. This is how it looked before. And if I would fold it and sew it on here, then it would look like this. I think that is acceptable. I could do the same thing on the back side. But now the difficult thing is to decide where to fold this and so that this is not too short then and that it is not in the end still too long. Yeah, So I have to decide for that and I, to be honest, don't know how. Barbara, I need you. Sometimes I ha really have the feeling that you need a 49 dragonflies gene or something like that to make these paperback covers <laughs> and paperback journals at all. I have absolutely no idea how she is how she manages that every single time so well. I have absolutely no idea. Barbara, you are genius. 
really i i really think that is that is i'm not kidding it's a it's not a joke i really <lacht> ich ziehe meinen hut vor dir barbara ich uh, habe keine Ahnung, wie ich das auf Englisch sagen muss, aber das ist so. Wirklich. Here is this like, this is not flat. Yeah? And because of that, I can't measure this. Do you know what? I, I probably have to staple in here so that this gets like so. Or so over that, so that it is really wonky. That is also a problem. It is not... It is not a rectangle and it is not crazily wonky. Do you know what I mean? And perhaps that is my problem here. I think I really have to overcome my overthinking, which I have at the moment. And perhaps I just have to go to my sewing machine and just sew over here without thinking. My lieber Herr Gesangsverein. Holy moly guacamole. <laughs> I think I have never been so appreciative to have the sewing machine of my grandma than today. I am so happy it worked. But if you have like a normal sewing machine, yeah, I don't want to say a cheap sewing machine because cheap sewing machines can also be good sewing machines. But... Please try out, if you want to do something like this with such a heavy material, we have several layers of the paper here. Please try out if your sewing machine can handle something like this. This is, I guess, the maximum of what my sewing machine can do. Please don't hurt yourself and don't ruin your sewing machine. As you can see, <clears throat> I have sewn somehow crazy over here, uh, but with a little strategy um i went along here this whole thing look like this this wave here i did that because i thought that looks great and we can also see that this is like another layer here that gives the the layer here a little frame or outline or something i also went over this little area here to make this stay down here I thought it would be good to follow the line of the fabric so that this is like, you know, that it is not loose here and that it doesn't look weird when it ends here, the same here. But here I went not totally to the top, but only until here. I thought that looks great. I also went with my sewing over this black line here, which was on the paper bag before. And I've just followed the line to have two of these lines here and a third line here with this sewing so i thought that is good oh yes 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 this is oh, i i don't know if you can see that or feel it just by watching it i i think that is not possible i think i i i don't know but this feels so so much better now now i have a book even if this isn't sewn in yet in the step before, when this was too long, it was just uh, a paper bag, uh, uh, a pile of trash or something. So crazy. This feeling is so crazy. Oh, that was so worth it to do that. Okay, so then, uh, let me think. Can I already then sew the signatures in here? Or do we have to do other things first? The cover will not stay like this. Mm, this is just the construction of the cover. I want to decorate it, but, and I will do that in another video, but I want to think if I have to do things before I can now go to the sewing machine and sew the signatures in, but I think we can already do that, can't we? How to know where to sew now? I am going to take my template, um, place this here, and then I make little marks so that I know where to sew. So I'm going to put this on here and then I can see here where I have to clamp this. I am such an idiot. This is my first signature. And just, I, I mean, oh no, I have, <laughs> I 
have sewn it to the wrong place. It worked so well. Oh no, I want to cry. Look, this is absolutely parallel. I was so proud that this is parallel and now I'm realizing that this was supposed to be the first signature and this and this is also because this is um, not so many pages um, like this and this one. I wanted to have that in the middle. Oh no. And I thought that this would be a great opening for the journal. Like, you know, arrangement for the first side that you get when you open the journal. And now if I would do it like this, it would be like so. Ah. Oh no. I'm just thinking if this, I mean, it is like, can you see like a curve? Perhaps it's not, not so bad if this is in the middle here instead of in the beginning of the journal. But, oh no. Why? I mean, I have controlled everything. Shall I take that out? Shall I try to do, yeah, I think I will do that. Because I don't, I think I don't like when this is like so. But on the other hand, I can already see when I press this down, because here it is attached, it will be attached then later. This is really fat. And perhaps it's not so bad if this is the front page, because if this short page was here, then this will always do something like this when I open the journal. <clears throat> I think I'm going to live with that. I will take this and sew that in here and leave this in the middle and perhaps that is perhaps that is even a really great happy accident i feel really clever because i oh, i have changed the color of my thread before sewing the signatures in because you can see i have the other threads mm, here and they are really dark Oh my goodness, this is so cool. Uh, and I, I thought about this before I went to my sewing machine because I thought I won't like it if these threads would be uh, this dark here. That then yeah would destroy the spine somehow. And because of that, I've chosen a thread. I was really lucky that I could find one in one of my boxes which had the right color. I've changed that to this color so that you nearly can't see <clears throat> these things here. And it looks a little bit like this was supposed to be there. Mm, a way, an even more clever way would have been to take some, yeah, of this thread and make some decorative stitching with that uh, color of the thread here as well. Perhaps I can even... I can even do that. I can still do that. I mean, I could take this and put that to my sewing machine and then just sew, for example, like here and here. I think I will do that so that we have these lines then going along here and that this is not mm, necessarily seen as the binding. Do you know what I mean? And I could do that here as well. Yeah, I think I will do that because that is still possible. So let's go through this really quickly. I mean, you will get a flip through of this when the journal is finished. So you will see this in my future videos. I will work in this journal, of course, and you can follow my process. And then in the very end, I will give you a whole flip through of this when this is finished. I'm just curious about this here. I mean, it's a little bit perforated. Yeah, it was an experiment and I think I will not do it again. I can already see here it's okay. That is interesting. Here it's okay. But my sewing machine and the thread have perforated this here. I think I will solve this problem with some kind of tape or fabric or so. But I want to see... Um, how long it takes until the pages are falling out. Yeah, so this is, you know, it's not a journal for sale. It's my journal, so I can experiment. 
but I wanted to point out I would not do something like this if this was for my shop. Yeah, I, I think I would not do those experiments because you can never know if uh, or how long this will hold. And I think it's not a good idea to do exper experiments when you, uh, if you want to sell your journal or if you want to gift it away. I, I also would not do that if this was a gift for someone. But um, if you see this video and you want to make something similar, I would say take something to reinforce this before you sew the paper in. So I will definitely not do something like this again, but it was worth the try because, yeah, it's, that is interesting. This is also in the front of the signature and here nothing happened. It's only on those pages in the beginning of the journal. Why? Why is that? Here it is also perforated a little bit. Why? Why is that not everywhere? I can't understand that. But perhaps that is like a secret of junk journaling and we have to live with that. Okay, so that's it for today. <laughs> I hope you could learn some things how to not do the things. <laughs> and perhaps you could get some inspiration for your own junk journals. Uh, I, I am really, really happy that I was not alone here on my desk with this project and that you have been here with me. So thank you very, very much for watching. And I will definitely decorate this junk journal cover a little further. And we will, of course, also work in the journal. And I say we because I will turn on the camera, of course. And I would love if you would join me when I create some pages in this journal and make some collages and adding some photos and so on. I think that was not a good sentence, but hopefully you mean you know what I mean. I'm, I'm so... Do you know this feeling when you are completely exhausted but so happy at the same time that you can't speak anymore? <laughs> That's where I am at the moment. So I hope you will stay tuned and I'm hoping that um, we will see the next time. So have a very great and creative day. Bye bye.